Yes. Okay, good. And now we're live. Well, hello, hello, hello. We are live. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's show where we have Changi Tobin and Yvonne Green joining me today on today's live. We are talking about where my dream men are hiding. Where is your dream yes. man hiding? How to meet the perfect partner in real life? Um, so this conversation kind of came up um, when we were really talking about the retreat, the digital retreat that we've got coming up which is gonna be an amazing, amazing time for you ladies to come and join us for a digital retreat from wherever you are in the world. Wherever you are, ladies, come and learn how to entice a man in real life because we know where they're hiding. They're hiding right here. (laughs) We know where to find them. But on a serious note, I mean, look, there's so many of us out here who, okay, not us, you know, because we are not struggling, but there's so many ladies who, uh, <laughs> no, the struggle is not real it's not real on this not side real at on, all. This, on this Over side here. of the lake mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and we have taken certain steps to get us to this position where it's not a struggle where literally the song comes to life it's raining men <laughs> only for Yvonne because they can't <laughs> rain she just has a house that she goes into with her husband so they can't rain in her neighborhood I mean they do rain <laughs> use an umbrella whereas the rest of us love to be rained on <laughs> <laughs> I was just the rest the raining begin I was just going to say, uh, Unique, that I think what you should do is because they're raining men in your direction. Now you should move into another lane and let those coming behind have their chance. No, exactly. And that's the thing. You know, I, I'm not going to catch every man, right? So <laughs> I, all I want to do is share with my sisters. Oh, my sisters. Oh, I want to share. Yes, and this is why we you. have this. We want to share with you ladies how to actually attract the man and like, like I say, the reason why it's raining, man, is because we know where to find the rain. We yes. know where to locate the clouds that bring the yeah. rain. We know how to attract and 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 what is that process called where the rain goes up into the clouds? And I've forgotten my um my my biology. I've forgotten it either. It's been a while. I know, ago. right? Evaporation. We know Thank how you. to get the clouds moving in our direction so that it rains in your place. So the reason <laughs> I was saying, uh, talking about this, um, our our retreat that's coming up on the 17th of June, 7 p.m. BST, make a note of that. The links will be in the description box as soon as we finish this live. So make a note of that because you're gonna need the information. So we're gonna tell you the psychology behind how to attract a man, the psychology of being magnetic. If you watch the video that Chengi did recently about being embodying the siren, how do you actually do that? How do you become that woman that every man turns their heads, that stops traffic lights, that stops the you know, tracks? brings them <laughs> over here stop them in your track so it's not just an advert like this is actual real life this is what happens when you can embody a certain something and authenticity vulnerability femininity and today we are talking about where they are hiding and um we were actually talking about this earlier and then that we're gonna show we're gonna tell you some stuff but the real tea is going to be during the digital retreat on the 17th yeah. of June. So you need to make sure you register, like just be ready. So to kick us off, I am going to ask Chengi, Mama Swan, um, the whole thing about meeting a perfect partner, what is perfect really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to answer that, but I've got to say something about um, the retreat. Okay. What's really fun about this retreat, right, is the different rooms because we're practicing it today. It's so much fun. Yeah. I didn't know that you could do all that much fun stuff. So what's going to happen, ladies, is we're going to have different rooms with different coaches talking about different topics. You only get to choose two rooms out of five. We're going to have our trauma accounts that we're going to have uh, Coach Unique. She's going to, well, Unique is going to be talking about style. She's going to be styling us like a siren and we're going to have obviously Yvonne who is going to be teaching us exactly where to meet the perfect man offline for those of you who hate online dating and Edwina is going to be telling us about online dating what to do how to wink I was actually talking to a journalist today about online dating so that might be a good one Mm -hmm. to look out for um so people are back on apps okay 
Yes, they uh, are. So we're going to need to have that in our back pocket. So mm -hmm. Edwina is going to be covering that. And I believe Shani, our trauma counselor, is going to be telling us why we psychologically get stuck between and betwixt. So it's going to be amazing. And you only get to choose two rooms. I'm so sorry, but it's going to be going on. And you can leave one room and go to another if you don't want to. So isn't that cool? We've never done this before. It's a real wow. retreat. It's like going from the yoga. Yeah, room. it's going to be yeah. really, really cool. Yeah. yeah. You can you can literally be at home with your with your with your little uh kimono. You know what? You know the yes. st styles out kimono. The negligee the because we don't wear dodgy pajamas. Exactly. <laughs> negligee with glass in hand. You can even have yes. a masseuse over at your house. So while you're having the retreat, you can choose to be in any room. So it's like a proper, proper retreat. And oh, I actually had forgotten about that. That's going to be so exciting. I'm excited. But back to the topic, Mama Swan. Yes, no, so, back to the topic. Oh, I'm so sorry, I got carried away. Okay. <laughs> oh, is there a perfect man? Well, I think everyone who is a Black Swan kind of knows that there isn't that. And mm -hmm. I suspect, you know, only Black Swans come to the Black Swan universe to hear us out on a Tuesday night. Um, I, I think that though, with that being said, whilst it's said from every street corner, every mountaintop by every professional that I know of, mm -hmm. I do think that we do have a perfect man in our head. I do think that we have the avatar of perfection in our head and we are kind of shamed into not disclosing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I feel that, uh, yes, there, there is a perfect man in our head. The key is that perfect man is the combination of our father and Hollywood characters and Disney characters. There's mm. a perfect, that perfect man. Now, if your father in that Hollywood or Disney character um, were not great, well, the father was not great, then you're going to have a, a kind of weird kind of, crazy perfect man scenario but we definitely know that the perfect man is your father or if you didn't have a father it's going to be the male dominant male figure in your life growing up so there is a perfect guy whether he's truly perfect or not that's another story so for sure just so, so you're saying that there is a perfect man what about you coach Yvonne what do you think um hey, Yvonne hey. Green sorry <laughs> <laughs> Everybody we'll get used to it. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Green. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to say to everyone before I give you my answer is that uh, for the retreat, this is just a little teaser because for once I'm going to be in my wheelhouse and talking <laughs> about how to meet men organically. That's where I'm going to be. So I'm so looking forward to this. I digress, but anyway, I'm back to normal now. And um, is there a perfect um, man? I'm going to say this and use the saying that I've heard periodically through my life, and it's always an older person who has said it. And what the person said is, for every pot, there is a perfect lid there is a lid for that pot. So if you ask in the question, is there a perfect man? The person who chooses him believes he is perfect for her. So he is her perfect fit until the time he, be he isn't. So yes, there is. <laughs> so what's happening? So where are all these perfect men, Coach Yvonne? I mean, I, I really would love you to go into just a little bit of detail because I know <laughs> women are on because there's a lady just now who said she's she's been considering online dating, but before she even goes there, like where are they hiding? <clears throat> you know, um, there's a couple of things I've been thinking about this because as I, I didn't know we were going to be talking about it today and I'm I'm really glad that we are and so I've been really looking at it and there's two things I think that we need to do the first thing is going to be you yourself the woman mm -hmm. if you are if you like yourself and you treat yourself well with respect and you love on you then that which you have on the inside and how you treat yourself, that's how those around you are gonna treat you. So first of all, try, be good to you and don't say horrible things about you, treat yourself well. So that when you go out and you see people out there in your everyday life, 
guess what? They're going to know that I can't treat this one anyhow, because that mm -hmm. just, um, it, that comes out of you. It's in your DNA. You walk a certain way, you talk a certain way, you move a certain way with all those people around you because, you know, yeah. you've dealt with your hangups and all of those, uh, you know, traumas and everything that you've gone through. And once you've done that, one of the key things that I would say to anyone, what is it that you love to do? What do you like to do? Are you a, do you like to um, draw, paint? Maybe you're a sculptor and you just recently got into um, clay. You love on a Saturday afternoon, you find yourself in an art gallery and you're looking around at the paintings, whatever it is that you love to do. You go to the place that you love to do it in, and guess what? You're going to meet like-minded people there. So sure. you can go to a gallery on a Sunday. You know, in a gallery, you've got hundreds of people walking up and down. You're, you know, looking at things. And inevitably, when you're standing next to somebody, somebody will um, may say, oh, look at the brushstroke. Isn't that wonderful? Did you see the way the light hit and the, makes the white just sparkle? And you start up a conversation. Mm -hmm. simple it sounds simple but it's courage it is and with that because I was actually going to go into for someone to actually do that they need to find the courage within themselves so is it really us who are hiding and not the men Mama Swan do you care to elaborate on why we women are hiding are we hiding because <laughs> oh, we attract we attract <laughs> what what um we attract like attracts like, right? Mm. So it's the whole idea of, um, in the whole phrase, a lot of women say men are hiding. Where, where can we find them? And when we talk <laughs> about getting to know yourself, it's like a lot of women don't even want to do that work to get to know yourself. Like, do I even like art? Have I been to an art gallery? Would I be able to even know what, what, what brush stroke this is? Are we taking the time out to actually really learn to it so that we can attract what we like? And in that, in that not learning, I think that's where my question is coming from. Are we then hiding? And is it really us that are hiding and not the men? It's a very good question as usual. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Unique. Now, I've just done a reel that shall be coming out tomorrow. I meant to bring it out today, however. Yeah. <laughs> however, I do. There's so much more to share on this day. Uh, but here's, here's the thing. Um, and it's really great because a real you kind of have a minute to get your thoughts out. But this is this is really interesting. What is keeping us hiding is often our ego. It is in fact our ego. The avoidance of pain is really what is manifesting as um, I don't know where to go. I don't know how to talk. I'm a bit shy. Mm -hmm. Shyness in itself is an egoic response. It is a it is how you protected yourself as a child. You would mm. recoil and hide to stay safe, to not be seen by predators or people that were dangerous. Mm. Um, to say I'm unavailable for connection with you socially. So all are shy and I don't know. These are all egoic responses. These are all parts of the ego saying, no, 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 no. It is not safe. Mm -hmm. Now, the most difficult part of dealing with the ego in this way when you haven't done the work, like you said earlier, is that if you don't do the work, then it's a bit like, is it Pavlov's dog? Is that the right yeah. one? Yes. Where you kept getting zzz, zzz, Yeah. <laughs> right. Now, the thing with being found by love, because we're feminine women, so we're found by love. Being found by love and presenting yourself is a very vulnerable thing. Because when I present mm -hmm. myself, I am open to all kinds of hurt. I'm mm -hmm. open to attracting all kinds of people. I'm open to being disappointed. I'm open to being rejected. And all of those things are painful. So that that is the pain. And one thing about dating is that you're going to experience that. There's no two ways about it. Yeah. So what we do is we get enough, we get buzzed enough times <laughs> and we we normalize. And we find excuses because the one thing about the subconscious mind and the ego, it has the best excuses. I mean, listen, it is the most sophisticated piece of software that God and heaven mm -hmm, could have possibly mm -hmm. create. I mean, there isn't a computer as good and as sophisticated as the ego because yeah. the subconscious mind will come up with things like, 
oh, you know, we really just need to do some work on ourselves. And you've been working on yourself for the last 10 years, by the way, but you're yeah. still going to work on yourself. <laughs> uh, you know, um, it's really busy at work. I mean, right now my work schedule is yeah. crazy. Yeah. Um, or, right now I'm studying. I'm, I'm yeah, just, right now I'm studying. And I'm, I'm, like, just, I'm moving yeah. house right now. I'm just new to the I'm, I'm renovating. I've and, got the you know, kids yeah and you know I don't even know like I just don't know and all of them will be legitimate to the because the conscious mind just needs a reason right it doesn't have to be a more yeah. truthful reason it just has to be a reason why we don't touch that thing that's gonna buzz us and then we're gonna have to normalize you know being caged so you are right absolutely that we are the ones hiding we're hiding behind behind the wall of our ego that has protected us all our lives because guess what for me to show up at the art gallery I have to get out of my house I have to be seen before by you even get out of the house I've got to get dressed I got to look pretty I got to do my hair <laughs> you'll find something to look pretty in <laughs> and then the ego will tell you but you're tired yeah. but you don't have anything to wear mm-hmm. I mean w- you're fat Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's literally. That true. Yeah, so fat. Maybe you lost a bit of weight. But actually, can I add something to of that? Course. Because this is actually from personal experience. Because mm-hmm. I, I, before my reason for stopping myself to really pursuing my fashion was I'm not as tall and skinny as the women you find in fashion. I have a passion for fashion. You guys, you ladies know that. But I remember a time when I wouldn't do it because any designer I saw was dick thin. They were not models, but they were the designers. And I gave myself that excuse that, no, I'm, I'm too big. I'm too curvy for this kind of line of work. And I went a different direction. But we do do that, don't we? We give ourselves so many excuses. Like, we all know a man, all men, right? They are all out here. They are all looking we know a friend who's looking we we know somebody but yet all of us are still sat here single and finding all the excuses that we can find under this green blue earth i'll tell you what's a really good excuse for the church girls here's a good one oh the church let me tell this one can we go there please i'm I'm waiting on the lord to introduce my person to me no you know who you are you know who you are there's there's a better one yeah, Jesus is my husband. No, I'm waiting for him to knock my door. No, they don't. That that one is too bait. Coach. No, no, they don't do that one That's anymore. Too bait. Do, That's let me too look bait. at Let me let's not even go there. I I don't do that one anymore <laughs> because we have all been one of those Christian girls that we sat in the pures, pures, and coming up for any lineup that says anyone who's praying for marriage. You are there. Yeah. <laughs> anyone is trying to engage, I am there. Anyone is praying to meet a man, I am there. You are there. And the single mixers, you are there. And the yeah. relationship conversations, I am there. Every Sunday I'm serving first thing in the morning because brother so and so happens to play a guitar and he comes early. Maybe you might just notice me with my old granny clothes and still yeah. sitting in the <laughs> and everything. So I was one of those girls. I was one of those girls who will sit and it's not that the men are hiding. It's just that some, I really would like us to really address the Christian mentality of meeting men because oh, I yeah. think- I mean- the God yeah. piece is a winner. I mean, that one yeah. is a winner all day. I mean, that one is a winner. Now, let me just caveat the following before people think I'm backslidden and don't know Jesus the way I know Jesus. Okay. <laughs> 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 the truth is, there is and there are people who have a consecration who must wait on the Lord. There, yeah. there are people who God has point blank, period, said, so look at here. Not now. Mm-hmm. Right? Not now. Not this season. And they've been given the gift to go with it. Exactly. Yes. You know, um, wait a little bit longer. I know mm. God said to me, listen, before I started this career, he said, just because you can doesn't mean you must. I thought yeah. it was joking. Why is I thought that's your business? I'm going to go through <laughs> a lot. Right. But it was a warning that for you is going to be a different journey. Right. Mm. Now, not everybody has that. This is a special consecration. We call it like a consecration. It's something that you are set apart and set aside to do. Very few people have that. Now, everybody who's into the whole I'm waiting for God thing is thinking, but I have that. 
I remember when God said to me when I was under the tree, that is the most I shall wait on him. The truth is, it's not particularly people's fault. I, you know, be on the internet long enough and listen to a lot of the sermons. And I think this is really from well-meaning, well, good-hearted ministers who really want to protect their sheep because let's face it, it's crazy out here. And if if I was a a pastor and I didn't know how the dating world and the courtship world actually works, I would just want my, my flock in the pen safe and sound Perfected. and I yeah. would even convince myself that their husbands are going to come if I pray long enough because some of these pastors are so well-meaning they'll even pray at home for longer hours calling you by name praying and beseeching God for your husband like some of these pastors are really really sincere because they don't know what else to do prayer is what they're called to serving yeah. us in prayer spiritually is what they're called to so they do what they know um and you know so this is not to vilify them but when we don't know, and I found this to be true in Christian circles particularly, but I think all humans do it. Mm. When we don't know how to do something, we vilify it. When we don't know yeah. how to, like, you know, when somebody doesn't know how to prophesy, they they start to make fun of prophets, you know? Yeah. Oh, do you really need to know your name? Of course, you know, it's like, come on, just because you can't prophesy doesn't mean you have to tell people prophets don't exist. Like, exactly. let's all calm yeah. down, right? Um, and the thing is, because a lot of Christian leaders simply don't know how to navigate the dating and relationship space appropriately. I think I've only ever had one past I was like this and I'm not a relationship expert. So don't ask me, which I thought was very mature and very grown. Yeah. A lot of sheep, a, a lot of Christians are simply just doing what the spiritual leader says. And there's mm-hmm. almost a shame game. If you come through with your own plan, there's yeah. a shame game. If you don't meet the guy in your church or at your friend's church, there's a shame mm-hmm. game if he's not Bible bashing, tongue talking, stop, you know, prayer stomping, you know, there's, there's a brand that you're allowed to bring. Now, when we're looking at that, it's a very minute market, like we're looking mm-hmm. at this. So then what you end up having is the one stud in the church, the one masculine man who's been able to hold on to his masculinity for dear life, that every, <laughs> that, every <laughs> woman, <laughs> that every woman wants, right? They're even quarreling and hating on each other because they want that one guy. Or maybe yeah. two are really lucky. Uh, so we we have uh, kind of the problem at a high level of misinformed leaders who are well-meaning, um, telling their girls, look, don't, don't just be open. Don't go out there. Don't present yourself. Or go out there, present yourself, but they have no skills whatsoever. Yeah. So, um so it's just easier to pray about it. It's easier to have the old prayer group sessions, you know, collect the ch- single girls in church and let's all pray for our husbands. Um, and I'm sure, you know, a lot of church girls are now fatigued for the pray for the husband thing. But then when you also bring them into the academy and they're starting to be proactive, they have very low propensity for rejection. Mm-hmm. They've got yeah. very, very low capacity for the yeah. reality of dating. So when you're dealing with church girls, they get disappointed one or very two quickly. times and they go back, they revert back to the mindset of the Lord will do it yeah. because they don't actually believe that the Lord is in every rejection. The Lord is in every disappointment. The Lord is in every, you know, in Psalms 23, he says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no mm-hmm. evil for thou art with me. At I think times, that right? the doctrine, exactly the doctrine of a lot of Christians is that, you know, when you're going through the valley of the shadow of death, Jesus ain't with you. You just, you just found mm-hmm. yourself there. You, you just wondered, you naughty little sheep. But yeah. in Psalms, we're hearing that he is with me. Yeah. That means the shepherd led you there. That mm-hmm. means that there are experiences within our Christianity that are dark, but he's with us. And in that darkness, mm-hmm. there's something to be learned. Because for every dating encounter, whether you're disappointed or gratified or glorified or whatever from that encounter, you're going to learn something about yourself. Yeah. You're going to learn something about men. And if you're doing it with a Black Swan Relationship Academy, you're just going to grow from it. That's the end of story. You're going to grow, 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 right? Because you've got people here who are going to be challenging you, asking you questions, helping you, tweaking you so that you are actually growing. Because at the end of that difficult process, because anything worth having is worth fighting for, anything worth having is a mountain. There's nothing that God will give us that is precious that requires zero process. Like, Mm -hmm. forget Mm -hmm. it. If you want to achieve anything great, there's going to be process. So for us, it's about, 
rec- changing our doctrines and realizing that, yes, dating 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 men, okay, is not mm-hmm. sluttery, right? It's for you, your trauma, where you're coming from, how you're broken, your inexperience might require 40 lessons. Yeah. For Jane, who used to date a lot in her teens, who's worked out a few things or two, and who was a bit of a, you know, boy's girl in her 20s, she might need 20 lessons or 10. These are all lessons, but no one wants to show up for class because by the time I get into one class, two class, three class, then is you go back to fasting, to prayer, to yeah. Jesus will do it. And so it's a stuckness that is prevalent in the church. Mm-hmm. And the sad thing about it is that People are praying for what God has already given. Mm. Yeah, Mm. pretty much. And I was actually going to add something about how, um, you know, everything works out for, all things work out for our good, right? And sometimes it's we we, we want to choose, pick and choose what works for our good. So yes, prayer works for your good. Yes, fasting will work for your good. But there's also the walking out of the faith. There's mm. the, the going out on a date. Like everyone's always daunted about first dates. But before you even get to that first date is the preparation for the first date. And before you even get to wanting to go on the first date is the preparation of your own self and your own soul. And staying I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with staying in church, but statistically, there's not that many men in church. As we're talking earlier, it's like most men who are in church are married, Mm. have been brought in by a friend, only just coming to visit, (laughs) or are divorced. And most, most men are not exactly in the spaces that we would think we want them to be. And traditionally, church has always been a predominantly female based environment so you're not going to meet a single man who is proactively looking for a relationship within the church I mean yes there are exceptions I'm not saying that that's totally wrong they are exceptions but I think what what we also talked about as well was like especially again depending on your age group there's also the opportunity to look at divorced men and different types of men in with different eyes so coach Yvonne I would love you to touch on that so before we even go into where do you meet these men outside church let's touch on the mindset of how we actually look at men even with all the different phases that they're in considering that most of our audience is over 30 40s so they're not exactly necessarily looking for a man who is still single Mm -hmm. because if a man is still single by 45 and not married and hasn't been in a long-term relationship that's an issue there. So <laughs> how do we then prepare women to have that different mindset and look at different categories of men that are out there and available to reign on them? <laughs> <laughs> it, you know something? I think it's a case of where, first of all, women have to know what it is that they want. What do you want in your man? When... Mm. Um, Mama Swan talked about perfection earlier. It's what it is perfection to you. What does that perfection look like? And if Mm. you don't know what that is, you could be sitting opposite it and you don't know because you haven't taken the time to ask yourself that question. What do I want? When you know what you want, then you will know how to position yourself to look for it or for it to find you because remember uh, the man does the hunting you the Mm -hmm. woman need to be caught so if you um you know are seeing um a particular gentleman in your church let's say for instance he sits to the uh, right of you two rows down and every time he turns around you and his eyes meet and you think to yourself oh he really likes me no, he was just looking behind you to see. He's if looking to see what the Wi-Fi password is. is. There you go. Or he's looking because he invited a friend and he's holding the seat for him. And you're sitting there thinking, every time I look up, he keeps looking at me. No, you're looking in his direction. And I think sometimes when, as uh, women, when there isn't a lot to go around, there is only the few, 
You've got the mm. aunties that are also speaking to the gentleman for their um, nieces and nephews. You've yeah. got mothers speaking to the gentleman on behalf of their daughters. And bringing them jollof rice to church. Go. And the cooking. <laughs> so the single men are going home laden with food and all sorts from the aunts, the uncles. Everybody is doing something for them. So actually, the men are then seen as, you know, oh, we are. <clears throat> the price no, it's because. just and they think they are the price because everyone around them behaves that is you know when you go to the fairground and you see those people they're either throwing darts to win a prize or they're throwing a hoop to win a prize that's exactly how it looks and it can feel at the mm -hmm. end of church service and if you see all the women and they're sort of like you know everyone's got their best um, gear on and they're looking around and trying to catch attention and waiting you know for somebody to throw something over them and you don't know what it is you want I'm gonna say again and I will always say this do the work first know what it is just because you're sitting somewhere in among a group of people and you don't know what it is you want nobody's mm -hmm. gonna choose something that they if you don't know what you want how is yeah. he to know you know so yeah. the work has got to be done on you Make sure that you're ready for what, you know, when you said, um, Mama Swan, that, you know, they're waiting for God to do. Are mm. you prepared for what God is sending to you? Do you I know like what that. that is? It's also a case of, you know, if the man is divorced and he may have a, um, a couple of kids and you see him bring his children to, um, to church on a Sunday and you are talking to the children, not because you're interested in the uh, gentleman, but the children are lovely, you spend time with them. How do you know that he isn't your person? Because you may be younger and you want someone who's fresh and virile and what have you, and he doesn't happen to be that person. But how do you know if you don't know what it is you want? Are you just looking at the outer appearance? Because remember, mm -hmm. God has warned us, you look at the face, but I, God, look at the heart. And the only way you're going to know the heart of a man is if you know what you want. Then you will know how do I, you know, when I'm speaking to him, I'm speaking to him about this. I'm talking to him about art or I'm talking to him, um, you know, about nature. You know, um, the country that you visited a few uh, years ago, I was in Egypt and I saw this and this. Have you mm -hmm. been, you know, because you know you want somebody who just travels. You know you want somebody who's cultured and, you know, they're into the arts or, you know, he's a sportsman because you're into sport. Whatever it is, you know what it is you want mm -hmm. and you would want them to share share in the things that bring you joy but if it's just anyone when then when you get an anyone you're not going to want that either because you That's still true. don't know what to do with what it exactly <laughs> and I love I love how how you kind of phrase this something you touched on earlier about doing the work so you know, I've just joined this life. What work are you talking about? You're all these guys are always talking about. Coaches are, do the work, do the work, do the work. What work is it? Chengi, please enlighten our audience. What is this work? The work. The dreaded <laughs> work. The work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the work the work really is it well I call it work and professionals call it work because it feels like work it is work it um, is work it, 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 it is, is work, work. um <laughs> you know it's Hard really work. it is it's the journey from an unconscious life to a conscious life it's the mm -hmm. journey from sleepwalking through life and bumping into things to actually having your eyes open and the light on and actually navigate is the same space you're navigating but when you haven't done the work, you're doing it in a sleepwalking state. You're bumping into things. You're falling over things because you can't see anything. You're asleep. You're, you're fast asleep. And so many of us are sleepwalking. And what oh. that looks like is we've been handed, handed down a way of thinking, neuro, what they call neurological pathways. Those are p ways of thinking that we are handed down through the generations. And many of us just accept those codes if you like 
And when life changes, which it does all the time, now we live in a technological age. Like I've done, I think I have two videos on technological age. No one has actually seen them because people are not interested in the changes going on in the actual world because the world will perpetually change, but you're often using codes that no longer are relevant because the codes, a lot of us were given, let's talk about relationship, but this goes for money, it goes for everything. But let's talk about relationships. The codes you were handed down worked for your great grandmother yeah in a time and in a season where choosing and selecting was very different it was for survival physical survival you had to have a man to live to eat to move to be safe right and those are still the codes you're using and so you're sleepwalking in the world and when those codes don't work you just bump into somebody else who seems to be saying things that make sense to you. So if they're like, all men are full of BS or all men are losers, or then you're like, yay, because your sleepwalking experience, you know, has you bumping into things. So another sleepwalker has decided to have a voice online and you follow the sleepwalker. So you're all the blind leading the blind and mm. going to fall into the ditch. Why? Because it's too painful to look at the real world. Yeah. The real world is, is very, very painful escaping reality is one of the modalities or one of the mechanisms or one of the decisions we make in trauma when you know when if you talk to somebody who's been you know sexually assaulted especially as a child they will tell you that they left their body and they were almost watching themselves being violated whilst experiencing the aggravation and the pain of it simultaneously so a therapy psycho- psychologists call it disassociation so we learn very early to disassociate and so when we're doing the work we're being asked to integrate okay. and that's really painful because we spend a whole life disassociating it's so we're being asked yeah. to, exactly so we're being asked to get into the pain mm-hmm. so that we can re-engage with ourselves so that we can look at the story and reframe it and handle it in our more mature adult mind that yeah. is a that is a process that comes with a lot of tears, a lot of pain, a lot of escape, a lot of, um, you know, intention, because to be awake, to be conscious is a beautiful thing. Once it's a bit like, you know, when we wake up in the morning, we don't want to wake up because we're sleeping oh, one more hour, one more hour or whatever mm-hmm. we feel. It's, it's not comfortable. But once you get out of bed and you look at the morning, you're like, oh, I'm up. What a wonderful day. But yeah. that piece, that transition piece, that's what we call the work. So yeah. it's about, you know, willing yourself into consciousness, getting help into consciousness, the help is particularly important because you will touch pain. I remember what I said earlier about the ego and pain they yeah. don't get them at all. So when you are with somebody, it's a bit like having a nurse helping you to manage the pain as we heal that wound. So mm-hmm. the work is the work. It's completely, when I have to do the work with my therapist, honestly, I dread it all day. Like I just think, oh man, I've got to see her later. Because I know she's going to make me face things I don't want to face. She's going to make me touch wounds I don't want to touch. She's going to make me go places I don't want to go. And often when I am in therapy, my my inner voice, my self-talk is always be brave. Can you be brave? Just be brave, right? And so courage, bravery is required for the work. So we run from it. So what we do is we go for uh, channels, or relationship channels like tell us listen when a man does this you do that and when yeah. he tells you no you, we like the blanket we like the strategy right? like, like we the... like strategy because then if we get strategy we don't have to face our innards the problem yeah. is strategy can get you a demon right mm-hmm. so you can do really well with strategy and marry a demon and then because I like I always say we are all going to pay the piper right mm-hmm. you pay the piper on this side of yeah. of the relationship where you are still only responsible for yourself yeah or you pay the piper when you're responsible for yourself somebody else and children mm-hmm. or yeah. in-laws and yeah. families and extensions so now you are having to pay the price and and we know as coaches that we have married women who are paying the price you know after they've been damaged for many years you're now paying the piper Whereas you had the opportunity to pay the piper when you were still single, which is why God told me don't work. When I first started my career, I was like, God, who is my people? And I really wanted to work with married people and everybody and said, no, I want you to work with singles Hmm. because we need to fix it at the foundation. 
Yeah. Because the only way we're going to stop divorce is not necessarily by stopping people from applying for divorce because that that trade has already sailed that ship that ship has sailed okay <laughs> it's long yeah. since it's sailed that that disaster has happened that that travesty has happened in our generation what we have to do now is to stem it from the roots we now have to work with single people young people who are yet to get married single people even if they're older who have yet to marry invite yeah. them to do the work which is like pulling teeth um, mm-hmm. and the truth is we would be way more popular if we just didn't tell the truth um, yeah but... <laughs> which is like come and get a man in six months yes come wear this and, and... Well, that's what was said <laughs> yeah. you know all those you know kind of five tips to drive him wild you know yeah. we would be very popular and we have those we've got plenty of those we like to play I did the video on the siren the other day we like to play we did flirt and we, we like to play here but at the end of that play you, you know you're going to be invited to a deeper journey and I believe that the people will awaken to it and want to do it but yeah. honestly uh, that is the work and when you do the work what you thought you wanted, which was a man or relationship, becomes important but not urgent. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the thing that we have to get to. And sadly, we don't have that much time. So I just have a more, more like yeah. a roundup question, really, um, before we before we go ahead, Yvonne. May I, I just wanted to add something to what uh, Mama Swan just said. All that uh, Mama Swan spoke about is not something that happens overnight because you may want to um, come and think, oh, I think I should do that. (laughs) But here's the thing. If you are a woman, let's say you're in your mid, late 40s, or you may be in your 50s or even older, it's taken you from zero to wherever you are to be in the state that you're you're in. Yeah. And you're not going to be able to fix that in two sessions or in your first call with us. It mm-hmm. takes time. You've got to put in the work and it's got to be done. But the beauty of all of this is when the work is finished, Beautiful. just before even it's finished and you look at yourself and not only do you look at yourself and you see this new person, but Mm -hmm. you love this person and you're telling yourself my goodness look at me and you're not doing it in a way that you know you've got to turn sideways because you can't fit your head through the door you're doing Mm -hmm. it because you see the true your true nature you've seen your true self you've met yourself and you realize (laughs) you know what I'm okay that's when you know you've done the work and it's complete it is going to take time it's not a a two session one two three yet go kind of thing yeah i'm ready to go Um, yeah i should be ready to meet my man now no that's (laughs) that's very true (laughs) and the thing is with 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 us being afraid to really face ourselves. And I know we kind of started off saying like, look, come in, come and watch this live so we can teach you where to, where these men are hiding. And then now the reality of it that we're telling you is like, actually you have to do the work before you find where they're hiding. <laughs> and also join the digital retreat. But the question I was going to ask, like I said, at least let's leave these ladies and these amazing men who stuck with us for this one hour with something let them not just think okay so what I have to do the work every time I want a man is <laughs> and and Chang, you mentioned something as well about okay obviously the lessons that we're learning we're a different generation like I want to say generation from generation x onwards the world changed there's so many things that we saw women, women women's rights came into effect feminism came into effect there was no more world wars women now went to work equality became a thing um 50 50 became a thing there's red pill there's blue pill there's all sorts of interest there's a lot more interracial dating there is um you know there's all sorts of dating nuances that have come up so my question to you ladies is with all of these changes how does a modern woman or a man now navigate and consider where to find like okay how do i first for a man how do i even find my dream woman Like, because there are men who watch our channel and ask themselves, okay, yeah, I'd love one of those women who are doing the work because I'm doing the work. But what is 
the one thing that they can take away today and say, okay, you know what, I'm going to Im- implement this until the 17th of June, of June and then I'm going to join the coaches so I can find out a little bit more. So what is that one thing that you can leave with the audience today? Like what, how can they navigate to find that they are Mr. Perfect? Uh, are you waiting for me to speak? <laughs> I, was, I was hoping like all of you just like, no, I want to say something. I want to say something. Well, clearly, you know, it's, it's a very good question. Yes. And we don't want anybody to feel that they have come here and been duped. They have had <laughs> nurses come out with straight jackets right. and held them down <laughs> and put them in and made <laughs> you know hey, when, when you the lure work. people you know <laughs> you know we can't help it here at the black Revolution academy we happen to be women no. of great depth we can't yes. help okay it's the education you know, piece and the education yes and we're here to <laughs> educate and tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but what's that saying it's about we don't want to just give you fish. We want to teach you how to fish. How so to fish. Have fish for life and men reigning forever and ever. Yeah. Until you get your one and women reigning. Until yes. you get your one. Yeah. But yes. <laughs> Look, we I, you know, of course, welcome, gentlemen. You're very welcome. I actually have a few gentlemen clients who I absolutely adore and who adore me. Thank you very much. So, yes, we we do we do have gentlemen working with us privately. Those who are clearly um, astute and know a good thing when they see it, and obviously want to be trained <laughs> by the very best. Okay, so feel free to to join the Black Swan Relationship Academy and be coached by one of us fabulous ladies. Well, at least these two. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so um, for, for everybody, you know, um, the best place to be is outside your house. Yes. Mm. Like, we can talk about be here, be there, be there. But I'm going to say get outside your house and walk and be around. Be, be, be out. Miracles happen when you step out the door. Exactly. Nothing new is going to happen in your house. You know what's going to happen in your house is you're going to potter in your house. Nothing new is going to happen from your path, from the office to the gym, to the house or from the office to church. It, nothing new. We, that's a predictable path. And you know why it's predictable? Because your ego wants it that way, right? Mm. So, you know, if you normally go to the gym in the morning, go in the evening, challenge yourself perpetually to be in places you fear being Yeah, because the place where you fear the most often is where the blessing lies, right? Because mm-hmm. fear is, is like a barrier to our true blessing. So if I'm scared to go out alone, then I should go out alone. Yeah. If. I like to sit and flick channels, then at least for two hours of the day, I must potter outside, not in my garden. Mm -hmm. I must walk past where I normally walk or or watch a movie. Or watch a movie. Or Or theater. Or theater. Like the the key for, I believe, everyone, a start point, you know, like when athletes are about to go and there's on your marks, that that piece right there is a willingness to get out. Now, getting out isn't just physical. I know I'm going to go there. But yeah. it's also getting out and going on an app. Ah, why did you go there? Oh, no. Oh, I said it. You went there. I wouldn't say oh, it. I wouldn't say it. I wouldn't say it. I've already lost some viewers. How many people have lost? How many? How many? We've lost four viewers. How can you go there? Okay. And it's like, but I shall leave it at that. Yes, we know the work. No. Go play. You know, I think obviously if you've not been coached, if you've not been educated, if you've not been trained, have the mindset of adventure, curiosity. Yeah. Don't I go think out that's there. a key word, isn't it? Yeah. Curiosity. yeah. Don't have the kind of I'm gonna go out and meet my husband because my time has come. Hallelujah. Right. It's oh, I'm gonna meet my wife because my time it's not mindset is really key. When you have not, and I repeat, have not been coached, trained educated in the arts of male and female courtship rituals <laughs> it is important <laughs> that you have a curious and adventurous mindset so go yes. and play just go and have fun have a let's have a good time mindset 
have a let me I might make a cool friend mindset okay because that way we know you're going to go mess it up because you haven't been taught now anything yeah. we know you're going to mess it up <laughs> so <laughs> we know you're going to mess it up and you know because you're a rookie out here in these streets right but rookies can have fun on the streets you know yeah. rookies can go out practice your style, practice wearing different clothes, different things, um, you know, just get out, especially when the weather mm -hmm. is great, get out, do something you've never done before, challenge yourself to be uncomfortable and you will meet some really cool people and be friendly. Exactly. And I love, I love, I, love, I really do love that. And especially the part about uh, being curious and being open. And I think um, Yvonne has touched on it as well. It's like, do the th get to know yourself and do the things that you love. Mm -hmm. What was would you advise for this amazing person who's just joined this life and wants to know? Okay, I'm, I I feel it in my spirit. I feel it in my bones, Yvonne. I feel it. It's my time. Twenty twenty three is my time to meet my husband. Mm -hmm. What am I doing? Okay, if twenty twenty three is the time that you're going to meet your husband, oh, I guess. Get off that pedestal and let's come down to earth. And then <laughs> um, as uh, Mama Swan uh, just said, come out of your house. When you come out of your house, though, here's the thing. Have the right attitude. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying paint a smile on your face that we do every day when we're going to work. I mean, get your attitude <laughs> on, have the right, um, the not in your head, I'm gonna meet him now. The first man I meet down the road <laughs> I heard and he looks in my direction is mine. No, go Don't out go out there with your slingshot. No. Like go out <laughs> and making sure, <laughs> making sure that you know what, your energy is right. Because yeah. if you're going out, you know what? They said I'd better go. So you drag on an, a pair of jeans. You put on a T-shirt. You're in trainers. Your hat is down and you're walking. You're hunched over. And, and your sunglasses. Hat. Yes. And you're stomp, stomp, stomping around. Everybody can see and they're all step, They're moving out of your way. Joking yeah. aside, go with a right heart. You know, the mm. word says, if you're going to do anything, do it well, do it as unto God. So if you are telling yourself that, you know what, I'm going to get married this year and this is what you believe. And if you want that to happen, then have the right attitude of heart mm. about being ready to meet him. So change your um, not um, your makeup and your clothes only. Change the way in which you interact with people. Change the way in mm -hmm. which you speak. Change the way in which you present yourself when you're going out, when you're doing things and you're, you know, uh, there's always a smile on your face when you're meeting new people or you're just walking around. Let it be that you're walking down the road and your energy is so on point that people are actually thinking, wow, what a lovely girl. And because yeah. your energy is different, and one of the things that you can do before you go out, something that somebody not a million miles away from us told me today is say to yourself, thank you, Father, that I'm going out today and I'm going to have a great time. Yeah. I'm going to have a good time. I'm going to have a great time. It's going to be fun, even if all you're doing is just going for a walk around your local park. When you say that to yourself and you do that, guess what? Your whole attitude shifts. So you're not going out there thinking, I'm going to meet him today. So you're all, no, you're going for a walk. It's a beautiful day. He's going to, you know, if he's there and he's there, then yay. But if he's not, yeah. you have a great time. Change your persona and tell yourself something different that is going to happen. Take a few deep breaths. As you're closing the door, close the door and walk out and smile. That's so there true. You Thank you for that, Coach Yvonne. And when you're saying, I'll give an example of sometimes it always happens in the least expected. Like we always say, men rain on the side of the, of how you know, of the um, lake. Of the lake. 
-hmm. when the swans are not swimming over to this side (laughs) it's sometimes and like you said it's really about your attitude your curiosity and not coming out to attack men it's more like about (laughs) what spirit you're carrying with you is like is that whole, I think there's a there's a an aff- affirmation that Chengi shared with the Swan Nation once upon a time is about being available. Mm. It's like your coach. I keep saying coach. Sorry, like yes, Yvonne said one. earlier, but yeah, she's coaching one. Like Yvonne <laughs> said earlier, is are you even ready for what God has for you? Are you ready for it? Are you available for it? Have you opened up your heart to it? So to kind of add to what you ladies are saying is, yes, step outside, have the right attitude, but also be available for it. Allow what is to come to you to come to you. Because if you are expectant of an amazing day, you will have an amazing day. Are you receiving of an amazing day? Are you receiving of the 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 people you will meet because when you are receiving of them you will it will find it you'll find it easier to smile you will not have to put in a plastic smile because pleasantries will happen and mm. to give an example a few months few months back i happened to just take a, a different route not the normal route and kind of walk a longer distance from whenever i come home i got off at maybe two stops before and walked home and a gentleman tapped me on the shoulder and asked me if I'd like to share his, his chocolate with him. And I turned around, I was like, oh, hello, Obama. He looked this splitting image of Obama. But anyway, <laughs> we know it was not, but he was a very handsome, very gentle man. And he offered to take me out on a date. And it's little instances like that. I, it's not that I was intentional, but I need to, I was expecting him. It was about the energy that you embody in that moment because you're expecting a surprise you're expecting miracles you're expecting and have an amazing day you are expecting beautiful connections you're expecting good conversations and even as we go on the uh, perhaps (laughs) (laughs) we lost now we We haven't lost any Cynthia was like, you've lost all the church girls. They're back, they're back, back. they've braved it. They've come back, (laughs) yay. (laughs) They came back. (laughs) Even when we want to talk about this, even when you go on the apps, it's about the attitude, your curiosity. We get, we frustrate ourselves when we are not receiving of whatever we've we've told God we want, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it's very frustrating for God because of course he wants to give good gifts to his children. It's like God would not give you a, a snake when you've asked for a husband. He will not give you a stone when you've asked for a husband. <laughs> He's ready and willing to give you that, but our mindset is not receiving all that. And there's so many facets to it, which is why, again, you need to register onto our digital retreat on the 17th of June. That's literally like a week and a half, a week and a bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Saturday, 7 p.m. BST. Anyone who's ever attended a Black Swan event knows we deliver. 100%. And now that we've learned a few tricks, we can deliver <laughs> times five <laughs> on the same day. <laughs> Not have just one person, trick. Literally, we've discovered some new tricks and we, we are emerging, we're changing, we're embracing what and what, what we are doing as Black Swan Relationship Academy is evolving to accept what God is wanting to give us. Yeah. God is giving, gonna give us so, so much work to do and so many lives to touch, but we're making ourselves available for that. So mm-hmm. by making ourselves available for that, we've prepared in that we're gonna create different rooms. We've prepared in that we've sat and we've prayed about it. We've sat and we have meetings every Tuesday about it. That's the preparation that we're doing. So in everything that you want, you need to prepare for it. So come and receive, but take away whatever you want to take away from today and leave it in the comments as well. Let us know what nuggets you're taking away from today. It is 9.28, so we've got two minutes. Any last word, ladies? I've just got one word. Oh, sorry. My uh, last word is to buttress everything that has been said when you're out there. Don't force it. Let it happen naturally. <laughs> That's it. Yes! That's the one. <laughs> we love that. We love it. And yes, I but I will second that as well. My last word is bring a friend. You yes. know, evolution, growth, and doing the work alone can create so many vacuums and so much distance yeah. in your current relationships. And some mm-hmm. of us are walking away from 
good friendships because our friends are not evolving with us because we watch this channel alone but we don't share it we yeah. come to events and we grow and we evolve but we don't bring our friends I am a bring a friend.com girl whatever I do I am bringing five friends with me because yeah. I like to evolve and grow with my friends yeah. I, I don't want to leave them behind because making new friendships and then trying to find relation it's just long let's try and keep yeah. our friends so make this the one event that you come to and invite your friends bring all your friends yes. because we'd love to and meet them i was gonna say the beauty of that you can actually pay for your friend because you can pay whatever you want mm. from yes, a pound yes. all the way to one pound can two pay. Yeah. unlimited you can pay whatever you want so if i were me which is who i am <laughs> i would <laughs> friends and pay five pounds and let's come on the course <laughs> don't pay 500 let's mm. all come on the course and let's invest in each other because community yeah. community is key mm. we all would not be here if it had not been for this community we've all become friends we've all become we're in each other's lives right so it's one of those things where bring your friends so that you can grow your community with your friends the work is not easy. It's a lonely road, especially when you do it alone. So yeah. what better way to spend a Saturday evening with your friends? Do a girls' night. Come mm. in, put YouTube on, on your TV, get some drinks together, and let's talk. And you, you actually, even better, you can go in, bring five friends, and you can all go into different rooms, and you come back and chat about what you found in each room. Isn't that good? Because you can only, you're only limited to two rooms, unfortunately. You can't go into every room. So you can only do two rooms for the day. And with all the nuggets that we'll be sharing, this will not be replayed. This is a one-time thing. Yeah. It no will replay. not be redone. There's no replay this time because y'all have been getting so much free stuff. <laughs> y'all have been getting too much information that, you know, we want you to be there in person to experience it more than anything. But saying that, we are going to be back next week, same time, same place, doing this again for you. If there's anything, 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 anything that you would love us to talk about, put it in the comments. Mm -hmm. Let us know what you what guys want us to talk about, what you want us to share, because this is for you. This is to make sure that we are able to serve you in the best way we can. But from all of us here at the Platform Relationship Academy, we would like to say thank you so much for joining thank us you. tonight. And we will see you tomorrow. We have really done a very beautifully <laughs> quaffed <laughs> presentation. Bye, everybody. Bye bye. 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 We won't have to say it. We won't have to say it. What is it again? We have been beautifully. Coffered. 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 <laughs> this beautifully coffered presentation no. that has been right It doesn't matter, everyone. It doesn't matter. It's English. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> and on that note, uh, you've learned a new yes. word. Uh, maybe, goodbye. Lovely. Mm, goodbye. We'll be the time. We shall see you. Go out there and present yourself and go outside. Go outside. Yeah. Go outside.